Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. Do you just want to say thank you so much for your support on the episode before this one. It's really nice to see all of those likes and I do hope you enjoyed the 1.9 episode. As of the time I'm recording this one, that hasn't gone out yet. So do hope you enjoy it. We are now of course back on 1.8 and we're going to pop down below. That's what we're going to do. Can I do this right? It is a little bit tricky. Oh, that was so close. Did you see it? It really was so close. That is quite tricky to do when you can't actually see where you're looking. I love this thing down here. I've been jumping up and down in it all the time, going up to the floors above. It is really cool. Anyway, let's throw an ender pearl because we're going to be working on a new farm today. Now, I've had tons of feedback from you guys about the sheep farm, uh, which is actually in the other corner. I've gone the wrong way here. Also, that's kind of worrying. There's uh, mobs spawning on this bit over here. Let's check out the light levels. Don't get too close. F3, where is it? Lights, that's uh, third from the bottom. Seven, so they can just spawn in that little gap right there. If I chuck down a torch, which I do have, you can see I've got supplies in my inventory. To chuck down a torch right there. That should do just enough for now. Yeah, light level nine. So um, let's chuck that over here as well. By the way, don't think I mentioned it last episode. I got a suggestion to put black stained glass up the top here, as it isn't as bright as the the whites and the orange that we tried before, and that totally works, and I left it in there. But anyway, the sheep farm, it's going to take some time to figure out how to do the holding area at the back, so I'm going to go through that another time. We're going to leave this one alone for today, but I really love how this looks right here. It's so cool, and we're going to do something very different on this one, and I think we should actually aim to do all of them with a very distinct and different sort of style, kind of like we've done the floors on each part of the base. Anyway, today we are going to be working on, can you guess it? Yes, that's right. It's not a sugarcane farm. We're going to be doing a cactus farm. And I decided to put it over on this side. I'm not sure why I decided to do that, actually. It didn't really matter where it went. I guess probably because it's next to this one. feel a little bit more comfortable building something when you know you're not going to like go into that one's area and mess things up. But anyway, I've just been measuring out a couple of things and figuring out what we're going to do here. And I do just want to say, you will see a myth-busting episode coming up all about cactus farming because... I sat down and thought about how we could do this. I looked up some of the other designs that have been around. You know, I built these farms before. Um, there isn't too much you can do. There's nothing like revolutionary that hasn't really been discovered, as far as I'm aware, to do with cactus farming. But when I messed around with it a little bit, I realized that um, there's quite a few designs out there that aren't as efficient, efficient even, as other ones. And what we're going to do is basically build one that I think is relatively efficient and then soon you'll see a myth busting episode from me where I go through all the testing that I did in like a great amount of detail and uh, explain um, some more efficient ways of farming cactus. Anyway enough about that I've got an area to dig out here so I've measured roughly um, how big I want to do this and I'll tell you the layout now we're going to have a little uh, sort of walkway through the middle here and then we're going to have four farms which I think I'm going to make too high provided I can fit them below our potion brewing area up above so in total, eight cactus farms, which will all deliver the items to like a central storage location. And so first of all, we're going to have a little bit of a corridor here. And one of the things that I want to do is use the cactuses themselves as aesthetics. So what we'll probably see is uh, alternating sand and cactus pillars like this. Nope, don't walk into it. <laughs> I managed to walk into it, didn't I? And that's right in the way. Of course it is. Let's just remove a few more blocks. If you didn't know, cactuses can grow free high. I can't remember if they can actually generate in the world for high. Um, I think that's just sugarcane that does that. But you can, you know, make this go up to the sky limit if you continue to place cactus on top of it. And um, so what we'll do is we'll have alternating cactus in the entrance and like a corridor and we'll use them aesthetically. At least that's the challenge and I want to make this room look as cool as possible because the cactus farm itself has been done time and time again and is not the most interesting of farms to do in Minecraft. So um, we're going to have something like that going along. And I've just realized we won't be able to start it directly here because these blocks are in the way. So I don't know how that's all going to work out. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's start off with getting this corridor in place and then we can move on to doing the farms after we've got that done. Okay, so how about this? We've got sandstone and wood down below. They go together well. Obviously, sand is going to work with the cactus and uh, the wood from the outside here just sort of peels into the room. And I kind of feel like something's wrong when we hit the ceiling here. I think maybe the cactus are just a little bit too tall. Uh, but you can see what we've done here. We've got sea lanterns behind them for lighting so we don't have to have anything in the middle or anything visible. And then I put some lime green in the backdrop and dark green on top. I think I should have done that the other way around though. Having the darker colour in the back might have worked a little bit better 
And now this is just very plain. And like I said, not too sure about the height. So what we might do here is reduce the size of all the cactus and uh, and then play around with it a little bit more. I don't know, it just feels so plain. And as I extend it across, it doesn't feel right to keep it like that. So something's got to change with this roof, but otherwise I am pretty happy with the floor. Then we've got to figure out how it's going to turn around into this room because it's back here um, that I want to build the farm. Although I did measure it out. And if I remember, it was nine blocks and the bottom block would be level with the floor. So if we count as high as we can go, not sure if that ninth block includes a ceiling or not. Um, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the ninth one being the floor means we have to go down a little bit as well. So I wasn't sure how this was going to um, turn into the room next to it, like with the cactus sort of go along the sides. I think what I want to do is uh, wrap this wall or like the cactus wall up and then this room's going to have something different probably something plain like this uh, but we also got to drop down a couple of blocks as well by the looks of it so I'm really not sure how this is going to turn out or what we could do is go a few blocks further back and you can see up there um, that's the end of the room I think because you can see those blocks which would mean once we get past that point we can make it taller uh, at the moment just not sure what I'm going to do so I've spent my time working on this and we got what we're going to go with right here. You can see I've gone for some dark prismarine in here and it really does help. You know, obviously it ties into what we've got going on out here, but it's uh, a texture that has more texture, so to speak, than this plain color. And uh, also a little bit of depth in the roof look really good. I did have it lowered down, but definitely looks better when it's up. So it kind of looks dark. But that's actually the lighter color. And the dark one is now behind the cactus. And you can see it's quite a long walk because down here is where we're going to have the farms and do you know that's not too much of an issue because this isn't really going to be one that we need to visit too often so I don't mind the extra walk down to the end here it doesn't need to be uh, terribly efficient and then I've just been digging up as high as the room is going to go and just sort of putting this around the edge here what I might actually do and I think this will probably look a little bit better there's my dark prismarine is wrap that around so from the inside that kind of looks just fine doesn't it and then on this side, it's probably going to look a lot better. Yes, we'll go with that. Um, my thing with this wall is, though, I don't want to build it all out of the uh, lime green that we have here. I do think we need to put in a pattern. But first of all, I kind of want to clear out the space. And I want to do that with a time lapse because there is uh, a musician that I've been listening to for quite some time who I got in touch with recently and they gave me permission to use their music in the videos and it's yeah really great because I like their music a lot. So although it's just clearing out you know, an area, I think now is a great opportunity to do a time lapse and of course to share this music with you. So if you like it, you can check it out in the description box down below. As always, there is a link to the music featured in the videos. But for now, sit back, relax and enjoy the time lapse.
That was a lot of fun, and I'm really happy with how that time lapse turned out. It looked really cool, but also music from Byrocratic. Really happy to say that. Been listening to his music for a while now. And I thought I'd mention as well, I do write about music quite often, and I'll put a link to my blog spot uh, in the description box down below. I've written about Byro's music before as well, and really happy to include his music in my videos there. Some instrumental jazz hop, really like his style. If you like it, of course, be sure to check it out. And uh, now we've got a chest full of cobblestone that I've got to send back up top. And an inventory as well. Uh, but we have cleared out the room, which is great. It means we can move on to the next thing, which is designing a pattern for the walls. And at first I thought this was going to be quite fun. Then I realised the view of the farm is probably going to obscure a lot of what you see on the walls. So we'll probably take it one step at a time and perhaps start off with the layout of the farm and get the floor done first. So then we can start building it up and build the walls around it. Looks like I might have got my measuring wrong because the room comes out to this point over here and this is where it's going to end so we've got a bit of extra space back there. Uh, but I've kind of figured out how this is going to work now. So we're going to have uh, like a section here that's going to be too high and it's going to go up like this. And then we're going to have another section above it which is going to be with a different colour of clay. So inside this space you'll be able to look in and see the farm. As I do this though, something just doesn't look right about that. I've probably made a little bit of a mistake here. In fact, I think it's supposed to drop down um, so you would see this right here. Because obviously, as always, done a little bit of creative building uh, beforehand. And then there's going to be this trim that goes around the outside, which will be these dark prismarines. So you'll be able to see into the farm and see all of that going on. So that looks pretty cool. And like I said, different colour on top. And then for the floor over here, I've got this pattern. And I've got something here, which I think is going to look real good with it. If we chuck in some hay bales in the corners here, I like how they look a lot. I was looking for all the different colours that are yellow in the game, and I thought this one actually goes quite well next to sand. At the moment, though, it's next to sandstone, because I kind of laid this out a little bit different. And there's going to be light inside the farm as well, so all of this should be lit up prop. Wow, croaky throat. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Yes, all of this should get lit up because there'll be lights inside the farm. Um, so that looks alright, but I was wondering what would it look like if we had um, sand all around this and sand going all the way to the edge, which wouldn't be there. Okay, and then we put our sandstone, uh, not in that spot right there, but around the middle here in a ring, and then all of this was to be hay. You see the hay is now next to the sand, and that just matches the texture a little bit more because the smooth isn't quite the same as the top texture of the hay bale. And yeah, that side definitely just looks a touch better in my opinion. So I'll swap this one over and make it like this one over here. I like that a lot. That's going to be our pattern for the floor here now. So I guess the next step is to start building the farm. Looks like I'll need to take a trip to the Mesa soon as we're going to use a lot of clay in this farm. And I kind of got my measuring wrong here. You can see it did come out a little bit further. And that's because we needed a bit more of a gap. So somewhere here in the middle there might be a need for another light. But I have with me some sea lanterns. Now some of them are going to go down here at this sort of height. And the cobblestone is where the sand will be and the cactus will be on top. Which I think means the next time we have these sea lanterns they're going to be at this height right here. So these ones will be covered by water but these ones won't. So the light that they provide um, should come into this area. And I think it's going to be pretty likely that we will actually need... Um, another light source there in the middle, which is no problem, just something I need to take note of. So yeah, we're going to have two floors in this room, and this is sort of going to be the layout. The collection point will be in the middle, and I think we'll explain more of that when we get to it. But for now, what I need to do is put all of the sea lanterns in place, and the sand, and some of the cactus as well. Yeah, I want to get more of this built before I actually explain how it works. And by the way, there's a gap in the middle, as you can see. We're not going to put anything there. However, there will be prismarine going all the way around the back. And if I remember, we have to dig this back by one, and then it will go back by two, I think, for the dark prismarine. So that's where that's going to go to. And that'll just go all the way down to the other end and then come around on this side. So there'll be a gap in the middle. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the design. So let's get a bit more of it built, <laughs> and then I can uh, t tell you about it. So I've taken a trip to the Mesa biome and I think my pick will confirm that. That is the second pick that we have gone through in this video. We have been doing the work today, we really have. I must have brought home like an entire inventory of uh, clay. But now we're sort of ready to set up the a cactus farm and I'm running out of sea lanterns. We're going to have to take a trip to XB's base again 
um, as you can see put tons of them in here and yeah let's get this farm going I need a couple more things from this chest over here uh, where is the cactus oh it's already in my inventory okay and then we need some ice for water okay so the water goes in each of the corners we'll plop those down they'll probably melt by their own in a second and then obviously the cactus all goes in the uh, on the sand blocks even and then what we're going to do is take these glass panes and put them around the outside now I mentioned earlier in this video that I was going to do a myth busting episode all about this and you'll find out like in detail why I sort of sussed out that this is probably the best way to do cactus farming um, I'm not going to explain it in much detail now what I will say though is that this has one of the smallest hit boxes and if you look at where the hitbox is I've just realized there's a little bit of a flaw here potentially because when they join in the corner like this it actually creates a full block anyway the item is going to pop off in a random direction and it's going to hit the glass pane and then it's going to fall down into the water now if it goes into the corner with that block shape right there I'm not sure what's actually going to happen it might be more advisable to leave that one out like that and then the cactus would pop off and sort of fall down into this space that may or may not be um, <laughs> the best. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to test that and think about how that works. But anyway, the idea here is that simply um, the cactus item isn't going to go off and go all the way across and hit the other cactus. It's going to hit the glass and fall down in whatever direction it chooses to do so. So that is the cactus farm right there. And this is what it's going to look like. We need to now update the water. <laughs> I, I should have just broke it myself. There we go, and then all of those together are going to flow to the middle point. Right, that's made the one... Yes, it must have made that one flow, then this one, and now this one needs breaking. There we go. So all of the water is going to flow to the middle, and there's no dead spots in the water. It all has a current, so that means the items always move to this spot. And what we're going to do is actually have a hole here, and then we're going to have a hole there as well. And then down here as well, we'll pick up the items I was gonna say using hoppers that's not actually the plan the plan is to use some water streams and then take them all to a central point and then we'll pick them up with hoppers and then we'll probably put them in the back of the room I kinda of pictured it going along and having some of the chests in the ground at the front uh, but they'll probably look a little bit odd so at the back we'll probably have like some chests storage built up that's actually gonna work really well because we've got a big space right here we need something to put in it yeah, so, right, it's about time I got these farms built up, and then we can work on what I just talked about, the old chest storage. So this takes a surprisingly long time to build, and I think what we'll do in this episode is just build the one side, which I've done, and I want to get this end down here done, and maybe we'll leave some of the other bits for uh, another time. But this thing is running now, which is great. I've actually been collecting a fair bit of cactus and using it to... Finish planting down these ones over here so you can see this one isn't finished but the other ones are all done and down below we've even got a collection system well not really <laughs> but I've marked out where the water streams are going to go so it's going to flow from this side over to the middle from over there to over here and then they'll all go down to this side where we'll create an item elevator to take them up and drop them down into some chests which are going to appear in this space now I've just been looking around at the room and I've noticed that this over here looks quite odd um, in comparison to that side because we've got the extra bit of ledge over here so what I thought we would do and to be super efficient and save blocks when they're not visible I changed them over to cobble as you can see down the bottom there so these ones would actually um, just be filled in like that and then what we'll do is copy what we've got on the other side and have a rim that goes like this all the way across the other side so it's in here that we're gonna have our chests now because um, this stuff can't have you know there's no stair variant of it so we can't put the chest directly under means the chests are gonna be one block further back and I think the way we could do this initially I was thinking we'd have two there and oh, well double chest here double chest there uh, we might be able to get away with hmm, like a chest on either side then we got three in the middle you know, I could alternate and fill up the entire thing, so I have single chests going across the whole way. I don't know how I want to do that, but I'll look at it and I'll figure out. And also, up here I want to have um, this clay come across. So when we design something for, like, this top part of the wall and the roof, then it can be mirrored on either side, which I think would look really cool. 
so that now looks the same. Oh, that goes a little bit higher. Yes, yes, of course it does. So we'll raise that up, and that does actually make it look pretty cool. Do I have any sandstone on me? Just a couple of pieces. Let's grab... Well, actually, there's wood there, isn't there? So down at this end, if the chests are going to be one block back, you're actually going to see um, those. So we'll probably put wood going across the... And I don't actually want to fill that bit in yet, do I? So over on this side, we'll have some wood, and this would go all the way across. And then there'd be chests behind it. I think that's going to work out really well. Okay, so now I've got to do the water streams. We're going to elevate the items behind here. And then there'll be like some hoppers back here to drop them all into some chests. So you might not be able to hear it, but I can hear it. The faint sound of trickling water that was actually already here because of this water. <laughs> but we now got water down below. And I was going to show you it. <clears throat> but I've just made the smart decision of patching all of this up. So maybe not, but down there... At the bottom, the other side of that, there is a water stream, a hopper to pick up the items, put them into the dropper, and we have our silent elevator, which goes all the way up there, and uh, you can see there's a hopper right there, and then a row that goes across the top, and then they point into these chests. Now, you're probably asking, why haven't I used double chests? Why have I done it like this? Do you know what? I don't think it really matters. I just thought, hey, I'd do this one different today. Um, so it's worked out like that, and in order for me to actually finish... Uh, putting these like in place and make my way out of there I'm gonna need to destroy the blocks on the other side because I don't want to um, take out the droppers I guess so just a little bit more work here and then this is done so you can see we've got blocks around the side we're gonna have uh, blocks along the back here as well as I'm gonna fill in all of this with uh, green so you know when you look through the gaps you can just see green back there um, so in a moment this is going to be done, we're going to do a couple more things to touch up the area and then we'll probably be wrapping this one up. So the sheep farm is still on my mind and I had a suggestion, a really good suggestion actually. If we go back into this area and check out what's going on over here, we have entities stored. So these could be sheep and not villagers and we could have 16 of them in a row. They can all drop into there one by one. And then we could technically call them out at the same time as well. At the moment, though, you press the button here. Not going to do that because we want to keep these guys. And I'm not sure how else... Well, if this was a full block right here, we could run redstone across the top of it, press the button, and bring them out. Or, you know, uh, wire it up to a different button somewhere else. So this is probably the way we're going to store all of the sheep. I'm still trying to make up my mind on how to do this. But if we built one of those modules back there... Then after they're done going around in circles, the sheep would come up the top here, they'd fall into the water, because remember they're going to be in minecarts, and then they'd sort of get sorted out by this and fall in one by one. The problems that I'm worried about are the sheep bunching up into groups and getting grouped up like minecarts do, and also I've noticed where you have um, these gaps with the water, sometimes the villagers sort of get caught in them. I think you can see like one further down, although I've just noticed that here... There isn't any, and maybe that's because we've kicked the villager that was below it, and then it's fallen down. Um, but we can potentially run into some problems with that, which is yeah, a little bit worrying. Uh, but there might also be a solution with this as well. So anyway, my plan at the moment is to do a live stream later today, and uh, we're going to um, we're going to yeah bring some sheep down here some animals because we need to like find them out in the wild and bring them into the base and maybe we'll do that on the sheep farm as well now if i jump down from this level i'm pretty sure that doesn't pop up to the level we want to go to so i'm just going to throw an ender pearl down here and uh, you can see the cactus farm and it's finished and it's ever so slightly different from what we looked at a moment ago so cactus should be coming into here i think there's already some in this chest as well so it's working, it's farming cactus, and at some point we're going to finish this room and double it. But we're not going to do that in today's episode. I feel like I've uh, played this a lot recently and uh, yeah, spent a lot of time on this room. So anyway, that is going to be it from me, this episode of Hermitcraft. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like on the video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.